Welcome to the next lecture of our course, Mocking with Wiremock.net. And in this lecture, we'll be talking about some more details on the stubbing that we created in our last lecture. So if you remember in our last lecture, while we were trying to create a server, and then while we tried to perform a small stub, like a stub with a path for slash test, and then while we tried to use the get request type, and we tried to call this from the postman, we got the response as welcome to wiremock.net with the header as content type as application slash JSON. That's what happened in our last lecture. But in this lecture, we'll see how we can go even further to write even better code than what we have written before by adding even more operation that we can see out of this particular wiremock.net. So in order to achieve that, first of all, we're gonna stop this particular wiremock.net server that we are running over here. And then we are gonna see if we can add even more header operation, not just with one single header, but some more header type itself. So in order to do that, I'm actually gonna use not the with header method, because you can try to add again a dot with header to add one more header. But instead of doing it in this fashion, you can actually do it what is called as with headers method. And within this headers method, you can actually add a dictionary type. So I'll tell you what I really mean about that. So in order to achieve that, first of all, I am going to write something like this. I'm probably gonna copy this particular line of code. I'm gonna paste it over here. And this time, instead of the test, I'm gonna say header test or just headers. And then I'm gonna say welcome to wiremock.net test for headers. And instead of the with header, like how we wrote before, I'm gonna say with headers. And you can see that it is going to be accepting a I dictionary of string of string of headers, which means we need to pass a new dictionary type over here. So I'm gonna say new of dictionary. And over here, I can pass the string of string, which means it's the key and value pair over here. And then I'm gonna open and close the braces, something like this. So this way you can see that we are going to pass multiple headers over here within this particular dictionary. So now we have to pass the new dictionary and then within this dictionary, you can try to add the type that you're trying to add. But instead of you doing this way, I'm actually gonna use the spread syntax, which means you can just pass the content type something like this as the application json something like this and in order to add one more value to this dictionary you can just put a comma there and then you can just say accept so it's going to be accept and we can just pass the application json as well and finally i can also pass some more header if i wanted to for example the cache control so I'm gonna say cache control, and then I can pass the no cache here. So let's say no cache. So this is how we can pass multiple headers this time instead of just one single header. Now you may notice that we have not only just created with multiple different headers, but we have also created a different stub altogether. So this is the stub for the test. So this is the stub for the test. And this is the stub that we have got for the headers endpoint. So we can call this particular stub using the headers endpoint within our postman. So let's see how we can achieve that. So I'm gonna run this wiremock server.net over here. And if I go to the postman and instead of this test, if I just say headers, and if I hit send button this time, you will notice that it's gonna just work as expected. Welcome to wiremock.net test for headers. And also the response is gonna be 200 okay. And if you just go to the headers this time, you'll notice that we have five headers this time, which is gonna be the content type, cache controls is also coming up for you over here. And this is happening because we have got those details within our application running. But now you may also notice that, hey Karthik, we are always getting 200 okay response. What if I want to get some other response type instead of the 200 okay? So can I also mimic that with the wiremock.net. Well, guess what? We can do that. We can actually do what is called as 
with status code method over here. So I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna say dot with status code. And then instead of 200, which is defaulted all the time, we can pass the status code in such a way that you can pass a specific status code. So if you can use this HTTP status code dot, and you can specify the enum that you're looking for. So basically this HTTP status code is an enum which has got all the different status code with the HTTP server's response. So it's accepted. Uh, and then if it is accepted, it's called 202. And if it is ambiguous or bad gateway conflict continue, so you can see that all those things comes up. And if it is locked, it's gonna be 423. So you can just put that for now, just for playing around. And I'm just going to hit the ground, save it. And if I just run this particular wiremock.net, and if I just go to the postman, hit the send, you'll notice that it's gonna give me as 423 locked, which means the resources that are being accessed is locked. So that's what it really means. So that's what you're gonna be getting. But instead of that, I can also say probably accepted, which means it is a bit fine than the one that you can think of. Uh, and now if I just try to run this particular test, you will see that it is 202 accepted. So the request has been accepted for processing, but the processing has not been completed. That's what is 202 mean. So this is working fine, right? Like now we can also add a status code along with multiple headers over here. Now we can go even further as well. So you may ask like, hey, Karthik, what if I wanted to perform some more operation not just using the get operation, but also with a put operation or maybe a post operation. How can I achieve that? So just for simplicity purpose, because I wanted to show you that method, you can use what is called as using put method. And you can put all these operation pretty much exactly what you are expecting it to happen. And now if I try to perform an execution over here, and if I just go to the postman and if I hit send this time, you'll notice that this is still going to work fine because there is a stub registered for the get type. And now if you're just going to go to the put and then if I hit send, you'll also notice that the put is also going to work fine, which means the wiremock.net is much intelligent enough to register all the different stubs with different types automatically. Maybe we can also do a small test over here. What if I say, Karthik, you know what? I'm going to use the same path for the header, the, like headers itself, but I'm going to change it to the headers with second stub call. So let's see what is the expected response out of it. So this is already the same path with the same expectations over here. Uh, and this is also the same path and there is no special expectations. So I'm going to run this application right now. And the operation is going to be the get operation once again. And if I hit send this time, you will notice that it is going to give you the header with the second step call instead of the welcome to wiremock.net for headers. So it's not going to give you this one. Rather, it is going to serve the latest stub that has been registered within wiremock.net. So basically, if you have two steps, something like this, with the same definition, then it is gonna take whatever is registered with wiremock.net recently, which means the last one which has been registered. That's what is gonna be coming up for you over here. So in that way, you can think of that this wiremock.net is gonna register all the different stepping for you from the start to the end. So if there is going to be anything like duplicate, then it's going to take the latest one, which has been registered as a step for the wiremock.net. And that's what's going to be taken as a priority, not the older one. So you can see that it is not going to give you any conflict that there is a same header matching the same path because wiremock.net is going to always take the latest version of this tub, which has been registered with it. So now you can see that this is how things are going to be working with the different headers and with the different status code. But for now, you have already got the idea of how this can be achieved in the wiremock.net. Now, next lecture, we'll talk about how we can work with different types of matchers in order to work with these kind of path as you can see over here.